Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me is good friend of the show, Eric Jensen. Hello, Eric. How are you? Hello, Robert. Nice to meet you. Great, and uh, really looking forward to the release of Visual Studio 2026. Oh, absolutely. What's your favorite feature of it so far? I really like just performance is a feature. So I really like just the speed of opening uh, extend, opening solutions and switching between solutions. It's incredibly fast. The build speed has, has increased as well. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that. But another thing that I really enjoy is the fact that you can now uh, create and use a mermaid charts both uh, directly in your code and in your code editor, uh, but also together with the GitHub Copilot. All right. So before we go into that, you've been on the show a number of times, so you're kind of the man that needs no introduction, but <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself anyway in case there are viewers that aren't as familiar with you? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Erik Alskov Jensen, and I'm uh, from Denmark. Uh, I have, uh, I'm a consultant in a IT company called Context Ant, and um, I, uh, as, I'm also a Microsoft MVP, and I've been there for a few years. Um, I also publish a number of uh, extensions for Visual Studio. Uh, so I've been doing that since 2009-10 approximately. So I've been following the transition from 32-bit uh, to 64-bit and uh, been experienced some of the pain in related to that. But we're all past that now, so uh, things are looking good for the future. And one of the extensions I... Um, Publish is EAF Core Power Tools. Yep. Um, and another one is the SQLite Toolbox. Yep. Uh, we've had episodes on those, and those are ones I use all the time. You said uh, one of your favorite features is Mermaid Charts. Now, we just had an episode a couple weeks ago with Johan yep. on Mermaid Charts where we kind of introduced it. But yep. I think it's, it's a, a really interesting uh, new feature and opportunity. So, we thought we'd spend some more time on it. So what's your take on mermaid charts? What are they for? Why should I be interested? How do you see folks using them? Um, I think they're really interesting in the, with G GitHub Copilot, they can help you understand complex uh, areas like, for example, as we will see in a short while, understand the com dependencies uh, in this uh, rather large solution, which is actually the source code for EF Core Power Tools. And as you can see on the screen, um, there's a number of uh, projects in the screen. If I showed up the screen, there it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a number of projects involved, and it can be complex for if you are a new contributor, for example, it can be relatively complex to understand what are the dependencies between the various projects and so on. Um, but another thing is, I think, basically the ability to gen automatically generate. Uh, Mermaid diagrams, they're just text files and uh, YAML-based text files. So it's really easy to, to just spit out some text by iterating over something. Uh, and uh, then you can use that as documentation. And um, for example, both Azure DevOps and uh, GitHub Markdown supports rendering of mermaid charts inside Markdown. So they can be used as like more live documentation will we'll show something in a little while like what you could do where it, it's basically not something it will you made a chart many years ago but it's not up it's not completely outdated now so you can mm. make documentation graphical documentation more dynamic by using a mermaid charts it's also completely cross-platform uh, the viewer is uh, basically a javascript a small javascript app so it can the charts that you share can be viewed by any any user independent of what platform they use so the scenario you were just talking about is I'm now a developer on this project. Um, maybe I'm contributing to the code or maybe yes. I've just been brought in on this yes. application. And my question is, oh my God, there's a lot of files. How do things relate? And a mermaid chart would help. You could generate, we could generate a mermaid chart. So let's see how you do that. Yeah. Again. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, GitHub Copilot uh, for the, to help you with that. Um, create a chart of the dependencies in this solution. 
Okay. And then it knows what type of chart you're talking about. It knows to do a mermaid chart. You don't have to tell it, make a mermaid chart in specific or use the mermaid. I will, ju I will just I will just pretend I'm the stupid user and uh, hope that the co-pilot is smart enough to figure out what uh, what's going on. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Do you think I'm gam I'm gambling here? <laughs> yeah. So so um I it's gonna take a little while apparently thinking I'm on the internet. Okay, so let us keep starting to uh, actually enumerate the projects uh, in my solution. And it's fair enough, it's giving up on some of the .NET frameworks based projects. It's creating some YAML stuff here for me. So that, <clears throat> that looks like the syntax that uh, we saw in the previous episode when we created mermaid chart. So. That let's looks like, see. There's a looks right? like a graph. So let's just okay. go in and, and preview this. And so is that mermaid? And that is mermaid syntax. Look at that. So it was smart enough. Yeah. And um, it's rendering now. It's a little bit icky with the size of this. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm using control scrolling up and down at uh -huh. the. Yeah, there's a lot of dependencies. If I had a wider screen, I could probably see. <laughs> but that was blazing fast. I mean, so uh, yeah, so that was fast. It it enumerated. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit to say it politely, really hard to read. I wish I could zoom in more. And there's also some funny stuff with the right click menu here. I can save this as an HTML file, share it as an HTML file. But as I said before, this is actually just a markdown document. So this is something that I can include in my documentation and potentially update uh, whenever I need to and include in source control and share it uh, in both GitHub and as a DevOps repositories. But this should be able to give us some idea about the dependencies of uh, this project. Mm -hmm. uh, with arrows and a box representing each of the project in this uh, rather large solution. And so those are each class files? Those are class. Uh, these, are, these are each project file uh, in the solution and how, the, and, and how each project file references another project file. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, it, this is basically, as, as for me as a developer, in order to understand, okay, what what if I go to this project, what other projects does this project depend on? Mm -hmm. I could start uh, inspecting all the CS Poch file to decipher that, but uh, I think it's a little bit easier just to have this. And then just to review, Mermaid itself is not brand new. It's been around for a while. What's new here is the ability for Visual Studio Riddle to integrate with Copilot to create the Mermaid syntax for you yeah. and then render it as a chart all inside Visual Studio. Correct. You you could do this in VS 2020. You could render mm -hmm. markdown files with, or maybe even not, not markdown files, but just mermaid graphs, MMD files with a, with an, a, a third party extension. But, uh, but now it's baked in uh, to oh. product, which is really nice. And of course, Copilot understands. Didn't even, I didn't even have to say I want a dependency graph. It just understands what I meant when I said to right. create a chart. And if you want to learn more about the mermaid syntax, there you can go to the mermaid website. There, it's correct. Well it's a, a very active, uh, oh, completely open source uh, JavaScript yeah. project. Yeah. Um, and but let's let's look at another uh, use case. Yep. Um, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to. Um, Let's shut this down here. Uh, so this is a database project. It could also be just a live database, but this is a database project. Um, okay. And I'm uh, going to demo a feature in a new extension I just made uh, like a few few weeks ago called SQL Project Power Tools. Nice. And uh, another happy when you project. do a new extension. Absolutely. And it has the ability to take the database project we're currently at in the project in Solution Explorer, and then basically create a ER diagram, oh, cool. which is an entity entity relationship diagram, mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, based on the contents uh, in this database here. And if we scroll a little bit, uh, I'll just zoom again. You can see there's a number of SQL files here, and they each represent a table in the database. And uh, inside each of these scripts is um, create table statements and create index statements and so on. There's, right. And there's also foreign keys linking the tables 
from one to another. Uh, okay. So this is basically a definition of the objects, uh, indexes, tables, and so on, foreign keys inside my database. I have installed SQL Project Power Tools, unsurprisingly, and I'm going to pick the Mermaid ER diagram uh, feature, and it will start by building the database project, and then it will uh, crack that open and uh, display a list of the tables inside it. So we have a nice little uh, dialog here where we can, if we don't want to chart all our tables, we can pick and choose. But for the purpose of this uh, demo, we'll just uh, take everything and uh, it will generate a... Uh, Oh my God, that is awesome. A nice, um, let's just collapse this to make it a little bit bigger. And so this is a nice um, entity relationship diagram with uh, like column names, database type, indication what the type of column it is, is a pri primary key, a foreign key, or, or both mm -hmm. uh, for a many-to-many -many table. Um, so that's basically it. And as, as, as I mentioned before, you can now have a way to document your database as part of your of your source code, so to speak. Awesome. To help uh, people that are not, not comfortable with reading, create table scripts and so on, better understand how your database is designed or if you're presenting it to somebody to discuss uh, potential design changes. Oh, that's cool. Now, go back into the... Um context menu you had before yeah and there was a choice for data api builder scaffold correct yes so will that yeah. and we I, we did an episode a while back with jerry nixon on mm -hmm. data api builder yeah. and it looked pretty cool but it looked like a lot of steps so does this help you do that much more quickly it does indeed yes um Maybe, maybe, maybe we could make an episode where I think we are all the pages. I was just about to ask you, you'd come on <laughs> yeah. time next year. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. stuff going on yeah, yeah, out in the end of the year, as you might imagine. But once we imagine. get to the new year, you got to come back yeah. and show us that. Well, I will do that. But yes, it will create a, a, a command file to easily, because there's a lot of uh, configuration commands involved to actually build the configuration file. But yeah. this will create this will create a file with the commands for you, and then you can then you can work from there. And it will also allow you to to pick the database and the tables that you actually want to include in your data API because mm -hmm. you you will most likely not want to include all the objects in your database uh, in your uh, exposed API. All right, very cool. So, if you guys are interested in that, look for that sometime in the new year. <laughs> okay, back to mermaid diagrams. Yes. Um, so that was really fast. You created the ER diagram. Yes, and as, as I said before, this can be easily shared as part of... This is just a markdown file. Yeah. It's MD, and uh, so it can be uh, included in your source control as uh, just additional uh, documentation and something that's uh, maybe a little more gentle on the eyes than, uh, than reading uh, code. Right on. Okay, this has been awesome. Thanks, Eric. So it's a really cool feature and capability, the Mermaid charts. We've now done a couple episodes on it. So yes, if you haven't played, you guys haven't played around with that. Absolutely, start playing around with that. Um, and this is really cool. Thanks so much for coming on, Eric. You're welcome. And uh, let let me just add one thing. The code yes. for doing the ER diagram is of course open source and available on on GitHub if somebody else wants to see one way of doing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this extension is available now in preview? Uh, this extension is available now in preview uh, on yeah. uh, Visual Studio Marketplaces. Fantastic. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming on. You're Hope welcome. you guys enjoyed that. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Mm -hmm.